And yeah, and actually all the way down to the execution, down to the final nut and bolt. So this is really just starting from the basic idea all the way down to just doing detailed design. Basically everything until it goes into prototyping, which we will see later. So um, just a quick question about engineering and technicians. Do you guys go down on the floor and... Yeah, so there is really no sharp division also between technology guys and engineers. Yeah. Because some technology guys do the engineering and vice versa. So mm -hmm. it's a really... Uh, Fluid transition, let's say. So does everybody have a different role? Right, yes. Yeah, yeah. We have about 11 engineers here from all types of uh, engineering disciplines. So uh -huh. here is, let's say, the aerodynamics department, uh -huh. electrical engineering, mechanical and structural engineering, and CAD design. Uh -huh. back. So this is, really, we have the complete team, so we can take the idea from yeah. basic ideas. Mm -hmm. so we want this and that sort of airplane right. to do the conceptual yeah. design, to do the sizing studies, trade studies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, then preliminary design, design. What was the time frame between the idea for the uh, for the Pantera? Yeah. Uh, we started in 2009 with the idea. Yeah. And uh, basically now yeah. during that time we designed Everybody. it. Yeah, it was basically one year of just that. So that, yeah. that was a delay, but well worth it. So, uh, yeah. And this was basically the team that did both the effort. Awesome. So both the Pantera and the Taurus report. Congratulations, nice. <laughs> I mean, what we are mostly also very proud of is that Pantera was the aircraft we started with as yeah. our first design and it turned out to be pretty okay. So yeah, it's pretty nice. I just flew it, so thank you. It was pretty cool. <laughs> so what can we show? Uh, I do want to know about who does the parachute design? Parachute design. This is actually an external supplier. Uh, yeah. It's a Czech company, uh, Galaxy Rescue System. Yeah. And they do, they equip all our aircraft and also the Pantera now. They also equip the 4 g for so they uh -huh. Supply for all the other aircraft. So, what's your rate of descent when you? About a thousand feet a minute, between 800 and 1000, depending on the wind. So, if uh -huh. it goes sideways, it drops more. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. So, zero wind condition, it should be 800 feet per minute at nominal load. Okay. Basically, there's only three suppliers worldwide that produce rescue systems for manned airplanes. Mm -hmm. So, Galaxy is one of them. And they do, they do offer the highest deployment speeds amongst the three. Uh, we have the advantage of being in Europe. Other producers from elsewhere have a more difficult time sourcing this. And mm -hmm. Typically, you have to install such a system in relatively early stages of production of an aeroplane. Mm -hmm. So you have to put it in your own supply chain mm -hmm. and you have to have it here when you're building the aeroplane. It's not possible to do it later on. So typically, producers just stick to whatever it's available at their continent where they operate. Yeah. But we are lucky to be relatively nearby to one of the best yeah. suppliers for that. And so, it, we were joking around about testing it on today. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been expensive. <laughs> that would have been, I wouldn't have got the jacket then. <laughs> but, no, just joking. But, um, so, if, if you never tested it? They tested it. Uh, the, the test protocol, because it's not a primary safety device, so the yeah. still has to go through the complete certification schedule, including the spin testing and everything. Yeah. Uh, you have to make sure that it's deployable, so it actually shoots out of the airframe and all the hatches open the way they should. Uh, and all the load points should actually carry mm -hmm. the load that's, that's there. In fact, uh, every load has to carry double, double what's normal enough. plus the safety factors. In case you have some. Yeah, in case the attitude yeah. is yeah. like really yeah. strange when, yeah. when you deploy the whole system. Because it is an actual rocket that uh -huh. extracts the canopy. The canopy is in a, in a sock, uh -huh. and this sock then flies away and poof, you have the canopy open. It, it's a pretty quick thing. You know? It's not like on the Soyuz where it takes time. <laughs> Uh, this, I, have, the, I like parachutes. They, yeah. they, when they work, it's nice. They, <laughs> the, whole, the whole activation sequence is about three seconds long. Okay. Everything. From the pull of the handle to, to a completely deployed parachute. Yeah. Pretty cool. Hopefully, you won't have to happen. <laughs> I don't know if Gregor mentioned, Pipister is a pioneer in electric flight since 2007. Mm -hmm. We were the first to fly a two-seat electric and a four-seat electric in 2011. Still the biggest electric aeroplane that has flown was ours. We also carry the distance record for electric aeroplanes mm -hmm. from Hollister to Santa Rosa. Mm -hmm. Over NASA Ames, over yeah, the San Francisco yeah. Bay, it was quite exciting. <laughs> um, we do our own motors. One is there. It's maybe interesting just to weigh it up a little bit. It's a 50 horsepower equivalent. It weighs about 25 pounds. Yeah. Okay. It's very dense, yeah. but still it's quite light for the altitude. Mm -hmm. And this is what we use on the gliders. So we have now gliders in serial production. 
with an electric motor. Okay. Uh, of course, the inverter bit is missing and the batteries are not mm -hmm. here, but uh, we are able to make really streamlined execution. So it's only a mast that carries the motor and the prop, mm -hmm. and this mast is then extended and retracted into the fuselage in the back. So the aeroplane is morphing in a way. Yeah. Uh, for, it allows for autonomous takeoff. It's powerful enough because the airframe is light. <coughs> wow. And once you're at an altitude, you simply retract the whole powertrain and continue gliding. So we do lots of things. That's cool. <laughs> You'll see the airplane downstairs, yeah. so you have an, a better idea yeah. of how this mechanism is. But we do a lot in, in researching electric flight and some new project as well. Two weeks ago, we were at NASA Dryden, and they're now using a tree propulsion system of ours for some testing. We're probably allowed to say if you're a NASA member of the building. They electrify an aeroplane for research projects. Yeah. And one of the motors will be used as a, as a bench for propeller testing. Okay. Yeah. Ah. Because it's really neat. You get all the parameters right there from the, from the controller. Uh -huh. And you know exactly what your prop is doing at any given RPM. So that's, that's cool. what they use it for. So our technology is in a lot of places. Nice. Yeah. And recently, Bosch done satellites. Yeah, we do aerospace as well. Yeah, exactly. yeah. We're doing design of uh, we brought the belonging controls. It's a neat and tidy execution. And it's about five times cheaper than the next competitor. So that, that's so, the edge. Yeah, yeah. So hopefully, lots of student CubeSats will have that on board starting later this year. We launch satellites while we're up. I know. Yeah, yeah you know. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, it's, These little it's guys, exciting, yeah. These little guys. Yeah. So we have um, some other units as well. One that is much smaller. Uh, panels, and not, mm -hmm. not a camera that needs yeah. to track something on the earth. It's completely sufficient and that's cheaper still. Wow. Uh, because we've found that there is, a, there is a niche in the student market. If you buy something like that of a reputed off-the-shelf uh, supplier, it's around 10,000 US. And mm -hmm. it, you could do it for two or 3,000 US and achieve adequate degrees of control. It's not perfect, but uh, then the students can play with algorithms and yeah. make it better, make it on, better their on their own. own. Right, yeah. right, right. That's also part of the part of Don't the give effort. them the absolute good example, you know, piece. <laughs> that's, that's, exactly good. What that's exactly what we believe. Make them work. <laughs> but you can see that our design methodology is really doing everything CAD and uh, you know, proceeding from the, this is exactly the same. All the circuitry, all the mechanical parts, uh, also all the aerodynamic shapes we do in CAD. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Evaluated using computer aided engineering tools. So elements. How do we look like compared to NASA? <laughs> it's similar, actually, yeah. very similar. Yeah. yeah I mean, yeah. really, I, there, I mean, there's things. NASA has other other parts and pieces and stuff like that, but we have a lot of extra baggage, and so so sometimes it's nice to see something brand spanking new. I was just out at SpaceX. I don't know if you guys mm -hmm. have been there, no. and uh, this is, you guys are a little bit more like SpaceX than, than NASA. NASA, like I said, there'd be a little bit more, a couple more books, I think, and a couple slide rules on the wall and <laughs> stuff like that. <laughs> so a little, this is more SpaceX related, but, uh, but pretty awesome. Awesome, you guys. This is the technology and the, the way we need to do things in the future. This is, this is big. It's a small team. We try to be as flexible as possible, so we tackle on really different things from from a complete aeroplane to just a section of technology mm -hmm. that we are not maybe feeling that much at home with yet, <laughs> but it's coming. So the next the next execution will be even better, I suppose, but uh, it's a good start. Yeah, absolutely. We'd like to get our hands on as much knowledge as possible to be able to realize something new later on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, also, I don't think there's a single engineer who is only skilled in one thing here. Yeah. You know, you would have an electric, an electrical engineer does mechanical, he did the undercarriage of Pantera, for example, yeah. but he's a, so... No, no getting bored here. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, if you get bored, then this is not, you're obviously in the wrong job because it's hard to get bored here. <laughs> Funny people ask me that about space too. Do you get bored up there? I'm like, no way. Is, I think you guys can understand this. Yeah, concept. This is cool. Yeah, very nice. Uh, let me check if there is something of interest. Some, some, yeah, all the components are in there. The basic shape is first designed using Katia and the popular inventor here for assembly. But really. So what? What? Mm -hmm. 
would you think to modify if you had to do any more drills? Right now, we don't have any serious modifications yet. I mean, we didn't expand the envelope, yeah. et cetera, but so far we've yeah. decreased with uh, whatever is there. Some minor mm -hmm. details, mm -hmm. some minor mm -hmm. aerodynamic point. Yeah. But so far, uh, maybe reducing the cooling because you went a bit conservative there, et cetera, mm -hmm. so things like that. Oh, wow. So far, it's a bit yeah. It's especially, I mean, probably you notice it's relatively easy to fly. Yeah. 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 So, even the pilots were a bit scared because similar performance aircraft, like the Lens Air, so uh, things like that tend to be a bit tricky. But well, uh, this is simple, pretty simple, yeah. yeah. We were surprised even ourselves when compared to yeah. virus, even it's more complicated than that. Sweat too much, I guess that's what it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we won't sweat so much. <laughs> so, but it's a very compact design okay. if you would check all the components, etc. It's a very small airframe for whatever's in there, so yeah. we track the blunder carriage and plenty of room inside, so uh, we then we then have to wrap all the components really tightly and neatly. So and he was mentioning the one thing about landing it, you know, just joking around, but a little serious about the stick. The trim doesn't allow, you really are pretty stick aft on the landing, right? Because the trim doesn't compensate for you. Well, you know? the the stick would be the same position anyway. The trimmer is only not uh, sorted out completely at that stage, yeah. so we have to make change, change the ranges mm -hmm. a bit, so and maybe change a bit of uh, curvature on the um, elevator, but um, very minor modifications. Yeah. And something we can change in the mode is for the next piece. So. <laughs> this is fun. <laughs> this is like playing a game, twirling <laughs> around here. I was no, also commenting the nice leather stick and the nice little winglet guys. Uh -huh. Very, very cute. <laughs> like I said, no slide rolls here. I don't think anybody will know how to use it anyway. Yeah, yeah, exactly. With the CSC technology, you can probably half the time from uh, the design to the model. Ten years ago, people would do this manually, oh, sections, yes. uh, sanding, filling, uh, mm -hmm. and really, you had to be really skilled to be able to reproduce the, the surface. Uh, now, now you can do it uh, in CNC in a fraction of time and also uh, more precise. Mm -hmm. but lot more precise. Oh, I have one question. We are talking about wind tunnels. Right, and no wind tunnel, this is pretty expensive. What yeah. we do uh, is follow the trends in computation of fluid dynamics a lot. So we do everything. We have our own dedicated computer cluster to do the CFD computation. Yeah. Okay. There are some pictures on the back yeah. there of okay. what we do, Pantera bottom right. And uh, basically, so far, we have pretty good correlation. So yeah. that's with actual so flying. So we go just from this just going there, and yeah. go fly. Yeah. And yeah. so far, it turned out well. I mean, the G4 was the first one designed actually mm -hmm. executed in this way mm -hmm. and now the Pantera and you know all of these things like handling qualities etc mm -hmm. and uh, these things come out okay so yeah. yeah you have some direct prediction is impossible but this is also true in wind plants yeah, as well right, right. Uh, some other things minor details of separation when it becomes big you can just forget it but you can, as long as the flow is attached you can do it or semi-attached then it's clear. So you have a look at the uh, how the mouse looks like. Uh, some of them is original tooling that was got by the doctor and he's last year. Some of them are also already from the serial production, like the usage models. surface and compare it to the 3D model. Uh, sometimes some of the executions are done by hand quicker than the machine, yeah. so it's reverse engineering in a way, yeah. and also uh, calibrating the computer model that's really possible to do in reality. Uh, the mold itself goes through a couple of temperature cycles before a part is complete, before an airframe pops up. Uh, so we need to achieve stiffness with all these yeah. support rods, and this also can tweak the shape a little bit. Simply yeah. because the metal behaves differently than the composite yeah. material of the model. The dots you see are basically coordinate systems for the 3D scan, so it's able to follow yeah. in yeah. one continuous flow. We try to do things as precisely and 
So is this one of these are the things on the side? Yeah, that's actually the hot air exhaust that are on the side of the fuselage. So typically oh, so the, just, the plane we yeah, see here yeah, is yeah. the firewall. Yeah, yeah, okay. okay. So this is an, an inset, so yeah. the, the aeroplane structure would yeah. be laminated on top of here and leave out this room where the hot air is exhausted. And yeah. Pantera doesn't use the conventional bottom hot air exhaust, we use it at the side. So at high angles of attack we are actually using suction on top of the wings to extract more air from the engine cowlings and yeah. vice versa at high speed there is less pressure there. It's like having cow flaps but yeah. without any moving parts. Yeah. So it's an attempt to do it in a bit more of a clever way and it works nicely. Yeah. Uh, we're satisfied with the decision. So this is staying. But these insets were made removable, so in case we didn't get the cooling right. In fact, we didn't. It cools a bit too much. Uh -huh. So we'll make them slightly smaller. Okay. But on yeah. the mold, it's not a big deal because we simply change this inset. To yeah, yeah, exactly. And that's it. The whole of the firewall stays exactly the same. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, some, some of the parts, some of the sections of the mold are actually modules that can be taken on and on. We use this docks like this for uh, it's called space vision system. Yeah. Actually, to uh, for robotic operations to line up stuff. Yeah. Classic. Yeah, it's a pain when you have to take them off, so that's why we have them on these yellow tapes. Yeah, just yeah. a bunch of them. <laughs> I don't know why they make the adhesive this strong. Probably it would hold the whole aeroplane together yeah. if you just. Bond it. With <laughs> really, it's, it's nasty. <laughs> These dots really hold up like crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. It's not as nice for them because they have to actually be inside. But the escape hatch we have is to check when the actual part is being made, one of the technicians will go inside and check that all the bonds were made properly. Mm -hmm. So all the bond lines here are actually glued. There is no fasteners or or any other bolted area. It's, it's all a bond line made of epoxy glue with some special additives. So he will go inside the mold, check everything and jump out again. So it's a three piece mold because of the complicated aeroplane yeah. shape. Um, for the two seaters we use a two piece mold for the visitor, just left and right. Uh -huh. So here we have the bottom one. Which is yeah, yeah, I see the right there. Yeah. I was wondering, it looked like a crack and then I understood yeah. that it was inside of it. This is where we do things. It's actually the size of this room. This is the creative room, room really. This know? is the, the actual workshop where the size of the NASA racing vehicle was determined. Yes. Uh, it's actually corner to corner. <laughs> <laughs> we couldn't make it there. Yeah. Yeah, and they, we have some pillars in between. So, yeah, this yeah. is actually what made it. And then, well, we can do things quite quickly. The, the airplane, maybe you haven't seen it before.